What's going on, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to the Book of Kells and Old Library at Trinity College in Dublin. It was maybe a week or so ago when I checked out a video on the history of Ireland, and in that video, he briefly touched on these very beautifully decorated manuscripts, these ancient manuscripts that are something like a thousand years old. And uh, the artwork was so detailed and just, it was just wow. And it really made me want to check them out. One of those books is called The Book of Kells. So that's why I'm checking out this video. And also the thumbnails of the library that this is in look absolutely amazing too. So um yeah, I just thought this would be a good video to kind of check out both at the same time. So anyways, this is the top 10 most asked questions about the Book of Kells and Old Library at Trinity College. Welcome to the Old Library in the heart of Trinity College, Dublin. It is also the home of the Book of Kells, one of the world's greatest medieval manuscripts. My name is Anne Diffley, and I've been hosting tours here in the library for over 30 years. Wow. I'm she going knows to what she's talking about. Journey through the library, through the Book of Kells, and I'm going to answer the top 10 questions that visitors regularly ask. Wow, dude. That is a beautiful library man it really is look at all these busts of the different people wow yeah i definitely like check this place out i can smell the books smell the old books in a place like that through the screen almost i really like the dark wood uh, in that library book of kells is a beautifully decorated manuscript of the four gospels of the life of Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. It's over 1,200 years old. Wow. And it's remarkable that it survived all this time. Yeah, that it's is. It's beautifully decorated. In fact, the artwork is what makes the Book of Kells wow. unique. No other manuscript from this period Look at that talent. is so beautifully illustrated and decorated. Oh my goodness. In fact, it's often referred to as the work of angels. The beauty of its lettering, the portraits, and the Celtic knot motifs have inspired people down through the centuries. Wow. If you look at the Book of Kells, you'll see the detail is so intricate that some of the detail, in fact, is nearly invisible to the naked eye. Wow. Theories about the creation of the Book of Kells differ. The most likely idea is that the Book of Kells was written by monks on the Scottish island of Iona. The island of Iona suffered many brutal Viking attacks wow. in the early 9th century. And it is thought that during one such attack, the monks set out on their boats to their sister monastery in Ireland, mm. bringing the Book of Kells with them. Wow. The sister monastery was located in Kells, County Meath. Uh -huh. And it was thought that the artwork was completed there. The Book of Kells remained at Kells till the 17th century, when it was brought to Trinity College for safekeeping. Wow. So it it lasted, let's see, 1,200 years old. Let's see. So when would that have been? Eight? Was that the 800s? Yeah. Wow. And so it lasted, how many hundreds of years did this book last without being in somewhere like a protected place like a library? Wow. Like seven, 800? I don't even know. Yeah. It had to be 800. Yeah. Wow. So it seems like it was wrote in possibly an island in Scotland, and the artwork was completed in Ireland. Wow. And has remained here ever since. Wow, that's an old library. The book was created by young monks around the age of 18, or possibly even younger. What? But in those days, 18 would have been considered middle-aged. The mind boggles on the wow. work that these young monks did. I mean, they needed a lot of stamina uh, and really good eyesight. Yeah. In fact, we know that in some manuscripts, uh, their monks have written little notes to each other saying things like, you know, I'm very cold, I'm tired of this, when will it be finished? 
Latin was not the first language of these teenage boys and probably accounts why there are mistakes in the Book of Kells. And indeed, one page has been copied twice. There are red crucifixes around this page, which really is the medieval term for please delete this page. The Book of Kells was written on calf skin known as vellum, and you can see an example here. It's estimated it took the skins of 185 wow. cows to make the pages in the Book of Kells. That's crazy. To prepare the vellum, the skin was soaked in lime. Then hair and other debris was scraped away using a knife. In medieval times, vellum was a, a valuable resource. The monks used what was available, uh, whether it was perfect or not. And some stitching is still visible showing where the Book of Kells was repaired or patched. What is really captivating about the Book of Kells is that the illustrations are full of symbolism. For example, snakes weave their way through most of the pages of the Book of Kells, including the one here behind me. Snakes were thought to represent the resurrection because really? the snakes shed their skin. And that makes sense, them. but I didn't know that. Peacocks okay. feature in all the major pages in the Book of Kells and are thought to represent Christ's immortality due to the ancient belief that peacock flesh did not disintegrate. Lions also play a major part in the symbolism in the Book of Kells. According to ancient Christian texts, lion cubs were born dead. Three days later, their father arrived, breathed over them and brought them to life. It's really? a symbol of the resurrection. Wow. So as you have gathered, the Book of Kells is a highly visual manuscript. It wasn't for daily use. It really is altar furniture. Uh, it was used on ceremonial occasions, holy days and high days. It must have been an awe-inspiring sight 1,200 years it ago. It is now. When most people had very little exposure to visual material. That's true. Yeah, okay, I hadn't thought about that Yeah, back then. Welcome to the long room. When visitors step into this room, it takes their breath away. Yeah. I think you can see why. Yeah, it's beautiful. In this library chamber, we have 200,000 of Trinity's oldest books. Wow. The first thing you will notice is that the books are arranged by size. So big books at the bottom, and the further on you go up, the smaller they get. I guess if you're coming down the ladder, you want to come down with the small book. Many of the books in the long room have been donated to Trinity in full collections. So the name of the donor or the collection can be found overhead. The answer is yes, it is a working library. Trinity students and researchers have access to these books, also members of other institutions, and so can any member of the community who say they need to see Trinity's copy. Hmm. Books from the long room are viewed in supervised reading rooms. Yeah, I can understand that. The library. This is arranged on request by our librarians. You have to protect those old books. They are kept busy. So on your visit, you're likely to see them accessing the books in our galleries. We have some books that have never been looked at. But we also have some books that are requested time after time. For instance, Shakespeare's first folio or a first edition of the Book of Mormon. Hmm. The application of the cotton cords began in the 1970s and these are put on by our conservation team for two reasons. Firstly, it's used to identify books that are particularly delicate or vulnerable and need conservation treatment. And secondly, it's to keep the book together so that the cover doesn't become detached. The Brian Baru harp is very special. Hmm. It is the oldest surviving harp in Ireland. It's made of willow and oak. Wow, and it's a beautiful from instrument. The 15th century. If you get in close, you can see how beautifully carved the wood is. You will notice along the harp some semi precious stones. The bards who play these instruments were the oral historians of the period, keeping alive the songs, the stories, the traditions of the various families. The bards were a very important part of Irish society, so much so that the harp became used as a symbol of Ireland in literature. And in the early 1920s, hmm. the new Irish government adopted the harp 
as the national emblem of Ireland. You see it on wow. our government publications, you see it on our coins, and of course, on our favorite beverage, Guinness. We are now near the end of the visit, and no visit would be complete without reflecting on the world famous people who have connection with this library. I'm often asked what famous Irish writers used the long room. It's worth mentioning that this library was the only library in Trinity for over 200 years, which means a lot of our past famous students would have walked through this space. That includes Jonathan Swift, author of Gulliver's Travels. In fact, we have a bus dedicated to Jonathan Swift in this room. Bram Stoker, who brought Dracula to the world, would have used this space. And also Samuel Beckett, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature, would have referenced the books here on the shelves. Perhaps our most famous Irish writer is Oscar Wilde. Mm. And it's really wonderful to think he also used this space. So wow. that brings us to the end of our visit to the Book of Kells and Old Library. I hope you enjoyed the tour of the top 10 visitor questions that are frequently asked. If you want to learn more, book a visit or have a Q&A, please go to our website at bookofkells.ie. Thank you. What a beautiful library. I love the dark wood with the old books and then the bus down below and just how it's got the two floors and whatnot. Um, you know, you can, looking through the screen, you can almost smell the old books and just hear the deafening silence of a place like that. Um, yeah, if if I can, when I'm in the Dublin area one day, I am definitely going to see about getting a tour of this library. My wife would absolutely love it. You know, she was going to possibly be a librarian at one point. She worked in libraries, uh, you know, from when she was like 15 on into her 20s. And she started going to college for library science, but she just never uh, continued for whatever reason. I'm not really sure, but um, she absolutely loves libraries. My, my, my daughter, granted, she's, you know, only four years old, but she loves libraries as well. And uh, so they would both well, I don't think my daughter would really quite get the significance of this library compared to other libraries she's been to, you know, at her age. But my wife would absolutely love to check this place out. And so would I. But anyways, guys, I think the one thing that stood out the most to me was the fact that the Book of Kells, it's so beautiful and so detailed and so intricate, but it was created by 18 year olds and younger, she said. So essentially, a bunch of kids created this book, and uh, it's one of the most detailed books in history, one of the most beautiful books in history, and isn't that amazing? That's just amazing that some 18, 17-year-olds created this book. And I thought it was interesting how she said at the time that would have been considered middle age. And while I think that's probably pretty accurate... Um, the thing we got to understand is that, you know, even if that was middle-aged and an 18 year old at the time would have had to grow up a lot faster than 18 year olds do today, you still got a question like how much more mature is the brain of an 18 year old 1200 years ago versus today? I, I think it's probably you know, about the same. I think that environmentally, they had to mature sooner, uh, especially if they were monks. They, they're probably going to uh, be focused on um, some some things that are going to make them automatically mature faster. But, but I just thinking about, you know, kids today, you know, teenagers creating something like that by hand. That's just amazing. That's, ama that's amazing for anyone to dedicate themselves to something that a project that huge for the amount of time it must have taken to create something so intricate. Anybody, I, I, I don't care how old you are, but to imagine, you know, a teenager sitting down 
And now, now, granted, I know it wasn't just one teenager, but just imagine the, the teenagers that were sitting down for that length of time, putting that much effort into this one project. It's just, that boggles the mind. Wow. Wow. I'd like to check out some of this other books, too. She made this one sound like this one was the most uh, artistically intricate or most detailed book. Um, but... I still like to check out the other ones. And I'm I'm wondering, she said it was the four Gospels. Is it the exact same thing you would find in a Bible today? Or probably not, because most people have most people's Bibles come from the King James Version. So this would have been well before that. So it would be interesting to see kind of what was wrote in uh the book of Kells. But anyways, guys, enough of me rambling. Thank you very much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to share your comments and suggestions. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to join me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.